why we are here today. And you can see the entire leadership of Wajia, Wajia being one of the 47 counties of the Republic of Kenya, is just to highlight two things. First, this is a country of laws, this is a country of rules, this is a country of traditions. We are want to first of all appreciate what the members of the County Assembly of Wajia have done. Truly, we are very proud of them. And we want to thank them on behalf of the people of Wajia, on behalf of the people of Kenya, actually, for truly living up to their mandate. Secondly, we also want to appeal to the people of Wajia to accord the new administration all the necessary support so that the new governor can deliver services. The expectations are so high. We have not been doing very well. You are aware, and I'm sure most of you in the fourth estate are aware of what has been happening in Wajia. So we also want to appeal to the people of Wajia to remain calm, to support the new governor, as the leadership, as the political leaders, we are 100% united behind the new governor. Any other side shows will have to wait its own time. So we also want to appeal to them to remain calm, support the new governor. Equally, we also appreciate the work. You know, this country has a number of uh, traditional arms and other imagined arms. We also want to appreciate the work being done by the judiciary. And, and uh, we are committed to the rule of law, to the adherence of the rule of law, and that is, I think, what holds this country together. And finally, because of where we are, we are also ready to accept the case has been referred to the Chief Justice for the embannelling of, uh, of, of, of a bench. Whatever outcome, we'll abide by. Until that happens, we have a duly sworn in governor. Let's give him the support that he requires so that he can deliver service. The expectation is so high, actually, and what people are really yearning for delivery of service. So at this juncture, I want to invite my friend. Uh, uh, this is the MP of all MPs. The MP, you will come and sit here. The MP of OJ East is the MP. The so thank you for coming in large number to see and hear the views of the leadership of OJ. I, my name is Honorable Rashid Amin, MP OJ East constituency and a representative of OJ Township. First and foremost, I would like to, to thank the County Assembly of Wajia and the Senate for discharging their constitutional mandate of impeaching the governor for Wajia for failure to provide services as designated and constitutionally mandated by the relevant laws in Kenya. So I want to thank them for upholding their constitutional mandate and impeaching the governor for Wajia. And I want to confirm here that what the counter assembly has done and what the Senate has done is reasonably within the law to impeach the governor for Wajia. And there is absolutely no lacuna in the administration and the leadership of Wajia County leadership. There is no lacuna whatsoever because the legal provisions and the constitutional mandate of the county assembly and the Senate has fully been discharged and reasonably executed by those entities, the Senate and the county assembly in discharging their functions. And I want to confirm here there is no lacuna in the leadership of Wajia County as per the swearing in of Honorable Mukhtar as the third governor for Wajia. There is no lacuna. Whatever that is happening currently in Wajia, I want to say, is a recipe, a shy shoes, and a recipe for chaos in Wajia Township. And I will not in any way, as a member of the representative of Wajia Town, accept anybody who will excite, who will create unnecessary tension in Wajia Township. I will not entertain. And what is happening here is, I want to say it clearly, I want the leadership of provisional administration 
the entire leadership of this country, for those who maintain law and order, to make sure that there's unnecessary tension and hostility among the people of Wajia Township until and unless there's otherwise decision which will come from the bench, three bench bench in Wajia, in, in, uh, is going to be attended by the judiciary. So I will say it here that the Minister for Interior, the leadership of provincial administration should maintain law and order so that, and the police, so that there is no unnecessary tension and hostility among the leadership and among the public in Wajir Township. Because what is happening here is totally a recipe for chaos. On the issue of service delivery, Wajir people are interested in service delivery. We, pro we want services, provision of services, adequate services in terms of the mandate provided be discharged by the current and the third governor of Wajia, Uttar. Finally, on the issue of Wajia leadership, we are totally in agreement of what has transpired in the first few, few weeks, the past few weeks, and you can see it. The entire leadership of Wajia mm -hmm. is support of the governor. And I will urge the leadership, the general public in Wajia, to support the new administration so that we continue to receive good services for the residents of Wajia. Thank you very much. This is uh, Professor Mahmoud Sheikh, Member of Parliament for Wajia South, and uh, uh, a member that comes from uh, um, the county that uh, has been in paralysis for the last three years. Uh, let me put it that way clearly. Today is a day that we cannot turn back. Today is a day that we cannot bring any further paralysis. It is a time for Wajia people to move forward. It is a time for Wajia people to say that it is uh, a moment of relief uh, in the sense that uh, uh, legal processes has been followed starting from an impeachment process that started from the county assembly that came to the Senate and that has been finalized at the Senate. Uh, it is important and imperative to understand that uh, we cannot you know, reverse the progress that we have made in terms of democracy. And Kenya is a democratic country, a country that bestows itself on the foundation of our forefathers that has established, that has established uh, you know, a legal process that can take place. Anyone with a complaint, anyone with an issue, anyone that feels that, have been aggrieved, that they have been aggrieved can go to the highest level of the courts in our country. But what cannot be stopped is governance that has come in through a legal process, through a, le a legal means. I must say that I should congratulate our brother, and I'm using the term our brother, uh, His Excellency Ahmed Ali Mukhtar, who has taken over the mandate as the third governor of Wajia County. And it is important, and again important, let me emphasize that, important with an imperative position to say that Wajia people want service. And the service delivery has begun on the 18th of May 2021. So we want to say everyone that comes from Wajia and the rest of the country to stand with us as Wajia people to see that we have delivered service for our people. I want to say one final point. Council of Governors are very important members of our country, executive members of our counties. We want to say to them that Wajia people have spoken they have spoken loud and clear through their representatives from the county assembly to the national uh, to, to the, uh, the senate oh, that's the national uh, you know uh, uh, office in terms of counties they have spoken and they have said that enough is enough and wajia must move forward and we want to say that the council of governors to support his excellency honorable ahmed ali mukhtar as the third governor of Wajia County. Thank you very much. We not only need to show our unity in terms of being together, but also to speak out the truth and the situation as we have. Uh, you, I just want to start with some small jokes. You know, uh, uh, one of your friends told me about the clanism and the dynamics in Wajia. Whether at the national level or county levels, clanism and tribalism is not a substitute for service delivery. 
it cannot be a reason. You cannot hide behind your communities. President Uhuru cannot hide behind his community. Uh, the governor Wajia or any other person cannot hide at the expense of service delivery. So we, the leaders of Wajia, are concerned about the situation in Wajia in terms of services. And we appreciate the steps taken both by the county assembly and the Senate for the sake of service delivery. And whatever that happened later, in the, including the swearing in, we want to send a warning to the current governor that the people of Wajia expect nothing short of service delivery from you. So we are not going to engage in shenanigans of what we have been in the last three years. I also want to appeal to the former governor and his whoever is with him, if there is any, that the people of Wajia need services which they have not got from you the last three years. Please give them time so that the current governor can deliver. We, at the national level and the county level, because the county assembly, as you have been told, 37 members voted for this impeachment. So you can see the level of unity for this. We come from different parties. We belong to different formations at the national level. But on the issue of Wajia and in terms of the services expected for the people of Wajia, we are united and one. So we are not going to go back on this, and uh, we are going to support the governor and we expect services from him. Thank you, sir. So, I also want to echo their sentiments. The fact that uh, uh, all elected leaders of uh, uh, the six constituencies and all elected uh, members of the county assembly are here is an indication of the suffering the people of uh, Wajia have undergone and uh, the need to have uh, uh, a change in regards to service delivery. You are all aware that uh, Northeastern and, of course, the Somali politics is dominated by the clan factor. The fact that this move has defied all odds, with the uh, elected members coming with one uh, united voice, is an indication of the suffering the people of Wajia County have undergone. Uh, no doubt that there, is, there was total breakdown of devolved services in regards to Wajia County. I am sure. Uh, most of you are in the loop uh, on what is happening because uh, the media uh, in one way or the other must have been covering this. And uh, we, s we are simply uh, requesting that uh, service be returned. Uh, we thank the county assembly in, in the move they have, uh, they have taken. Indeed, without the involvement of anybody, I feel they have reached the elasticity limit and they have decided to impeach the governor. We also want to thank the Senate for, for, for accepting the same. And uh, it is our prayers that the judiciary will also uphold the same. Uh, that way, as Wajia people, all we are saying is that Wajia should move forward now. I am Ahmed Bashani, MP Talbach, constituency. Uh, like my colleagues, I will take this opportunity to thank the MCS and the Senate for the effort they have taken in impeaching the former governor of Wajia. Uh, and then let me tell you why we are united, that you can see all the MPs and majority of the MCS, the sole purpose, the motivation for doing this is about surface delivery, no other issue. Uh, some people might say, as we have heard earlier, that this thing is being done because of politics of 2022. These groupings which you might see today might be in different camps tomorrow. And they have been in different camps earlier. The sole purpose of meeting together and impeaching the current, the former governor of Wajia is to get service delivery, which we have not received for the last four years. And this act which we have done today which was done by the MCS, senators, and supported by everybody, is to strengthen devolution, such that nobody will take things for granted and do things the way they require. We are united in this endeavor, and we will be united in whoever will take similar action, what the former governor has done. If there's no service delivery, you will be removed from where you are. 
which whoever governor you are, whether you are in Wajia, Mandela, Garissa, though I don't want to delve in other areas. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have uh, two representatives from the county assembly in the move of the, of the impeachment. I just want to expand on one thing. For it to reach where it has reached, it means it's more than services. The services had completely collapsed, actually all our sub-counties and that one. I'm surprised, you know, uh, how it did not come to national uh, before the impeachment. The, it's more than that because people have been conned. There are thousands of business people who have been given fake projects or they did real projects, they were never paid, and more and more. So we're talking of a bill of over five billion that is remaining with the new governor uh, that's happening. People who have been destitute, who are serious businessmen. So not only have we lost development, have we lost, uh, you know, what you call uh, our economy has been destroyed, our social fabric has also been destroyed through corruption, trying to use the clan system. I'll actually invite any serious investigative journalist to actually look how all our oversight uh, bodies can be compromised, how, including our traditional systems, you know, putting there, you know, all, all the clan elders, putting them on employment. You know, it is a classic, you know, it's something so crazy. And uh, I would really invite you guys, to anybody who is really serious investigative, just to look back three years, how we actually kept quiet for three years, how we have reached, okay, the, the assembly has tried before, but really there is something serious that is going on. All we say is, it's a good day for devolution. Those who do not know and who have been hearing other noises, please we invite them to go to Ajia, uh, to ourselves had collapsed. The new governor was in, uh, sworn in on, uh, on Tuesday, 18th. All the hospitals are open. He didn't use a single shilling. All the staff are back in, in, in whatever. Some who have been lying here. So poor management, basically. The, the streets have been cleaned in one week. So think of what, and we don't expect actually uh, tensions, clans. We are actually his clan. What we are saying is, do not try, you know, to cheat people, You're sending things, I'm coming back tomorrow, and all that. Go through the court process. If the court allows you, it will follow the law. In uh, short, we are saying uh, we have a county that has suffered for a long time. If he, my advice to him would be give it peace for, um, we elected him, we put him in, in place, he's been given a chance, now we should give a chance to the new governor. I need to thank the members of the fourth state, the leadership of Ujia County, members of uh, Ujia County Assembly, who are, he who are here this morning. And they all spoke and you heard them very well. Mine is to it's not to do with politics. As the governor of Ojia County, the expectation or what is expected of me is to deliver services to the people of Ojia. I was sworn in on the 18th, and as you heard from the speakers before me, there were very serious issues in Ojia. And we are very fortunate that at least we attended to many of these in the one week we were in office. Hospitals across the county were closed. Health officials or health workers were not at their places of work. Some were striking. Because of, you know, some small issues that any county government can handle. Now we are happy they are all back. Our hospitals are open. Staff are back to work. Um, so, and uh, you very well know what the complaints of the MCS were. The issues they brought to the Senate. Majority of those as somebody who has been 
working very well, had a very cordial relationship with his former boss. Majority of those issues that were enumerated very well by the assembly, though some were said to not to have not been substantiated, are all true. And I challenge the fourth estate, just like the CS, CS, to go to Wajia and do or cover these issues. They are still there, by the way. These issues are there. But ours now is to, you know, work on them and make sure these are not issues that will happen every now, every now and then in Wajia. I had uh, three and a half years uh, with my former boss, or the second governor of Wajia County. And you had the leadership, leadership speak here. We gave, them, we gave him the time to deliver to the people of Wajia. Unfortunately, you know what happened. I need not go back and tell you uh, what happened. We appeal to him to come on board as a citizen of the county and help us, if anything, to deliver to the people of Ojia. We have utmost respect to the judiciary. We know he has been to a number of courts, and the issue now is with the CJ, the Chief Justice, who is to form a panel to listen to the cases or the issues he is raising. Until then, Wajia has a governor, there is no vacuum, and we are more than ready to work for the people of Wajia. So mine is also to appeal to the people of Wajia to maintain calm. We have our own issues. We had an Al-Shabaab attack even last night, where a young, very young man, very innocent, a student, was killed. So we need to address these issues instead of you know, politicking and addressing the media every now and then on issues that won't add value to the people of Wajia. Thank you very much.